Hey y'all, Venture Brad here. Wanted to talk about my first boat. This is uh, brought to you by Treasure Vu. In no way that they uh, sponsor this or give me this or any of that, but yeah, it's uh, refreshed by Treasure Vu. I love this stuff and I like to brag about it because it's just awesome. If you like tea, straight tea, no sugar, find this stuff. It is good they use like the purest water and the best of the leaves so anyways this is dos briskness check it out it's a, kind of an interesting little boat uh it's a catamaran obviously i don't know how it strikes you as the floor's inflatable look at that it's like a paddleboard. So spec wise, it's 11 feet long. It has a beam, meaning the distance between the outer rub rail here and the rub rail here is supposed to be six feet. The distance in here is supposed to be trace feet. And the little tubage is supposed to be 17 inches. For those of you who are acute, you'll notice there's two inches missing in there. I haven't checked any of those measurements. Those are just box stocks. Um, and I don't even quite think it's 11 feet long. I think it's just a taste short. But anyways, 110 pounds. Um, I would say that it is because, like, um, there's one finger. I was trying to pick it all the way up, but I can't get it above my head. Uh, but I could pick it up one finger, one side. So I, I would say it's 110 pounds. Uh, it's got these little things. I thought they were going to be out the bottom, I guess, for directional stability, is what they claim. But uh, it's a cat. So I think maybe because of the tube is so rounded, it would want to skate side to side. Um, excuse me, but cats skate anyways. Anyways, but I like how they're off to the side and not on the bottom. Another thing that note on the bottom here is it's got these nice long rub rails. It does, you can see by the mark, kind of go down to the bottom there or to the floor. But I wish they came up just a little bit more. Um, nice open bottom and so little waves and stuff and lightly loaded. This is not even come close to the water. Um, you just get a little splashing in there, which would be nice. Um, this design is certainly going to be limited in bigger seas because you're not going to be able to cut much uh, if you can keep the bow up and out of the water. Um, you might have a decent job of cutting stuff, but uh, there's going to become a point when that bow starts stuffing and you're going to be done for. But I plan to operate this on a lake. I like, for me personally, the reason why I got the open bow version over the enclosed bow, either a boxy bow or a, like the traditional V Zodiac style bow, is because now this is a swim platform. I could, you know, lean this into the stand on it and just check out how strong this is. So you guys saw the distance underneath. I'm pushing the whole bow down onto the ground. The aft is up in the air, you know, foot, foot and a half. But that's stiff. It's pushing the whole thing down. But you're not going to do that in real life with an outboard on it. But you're going to be kind of build to bend it down. And so if that's our water level, which will actually be a couple inches up because the tunes are going to sit in the water. Um, you know, you're going to have less than a, you know, just a couple inches, four or six inches to climb up in to get into this thing. And a fairly easy over the top. Um, they didn't, I know I'm all over the place here, provide much for, uh, I wish these were angled 45 or forward or something so you could tow better i don't plan on towing this but if i'm in a situation where i do tow it i would like to have something better to pull on the front uh, and also for tying down the whole front end is one piece of material uh this soft stuff here that's just velcro that holds the this on i wish they doubled that up that's like my biggest concern on this whole boat um don't really want to get into a lot of the gripes, but yeah, none of this was really glued well. Um, I got in here with some more glue. I'm waiting on more glue and material to show up. 
Um, I was really kind of like this here. There's two. For the most part, you know, it's only a Chinese boat. And that's what I get for buying Chinese. But there's like, seems like two levels of craftsmen. Because for the most part, like these are a little dented here. They didn't quite get that right. But for the most part, the level of craftsmanship on these things is pretty dang good. Uh, you know, considering the boat's like $900. But so anyways, the whole strength of the boat is here. <laughs> they say that it's not an X-Cat. And if you guys don't know what an X-Cat is, I don't know what it is until they actually mentioned it in this product. And I was like, oh, what's an X-Cat? Looked up an X-Cat, as you should too. They're really cool. But they're like, this is not an X-Cat because it doesn't have sponsors. Yes, the word sponsors, which I think they mean sponsons. Which, anyways, we're not going into boats or any of that right now. But, it, yeah, sponsors. And it doesn't have a fiberglass wing. Well, sponsors, I thought those were just stickers that you put on a car that, you know, everybody gets like the little five mile an hour plus horsepower NOS sticker. No, you could you could get sponsors really. I could have my neighbor sponsor me. But, hey, dude, you want to sponsor me a quarter to run my boat? And I write his name on it. I'm sponsored. Professional racer, yo. Um more than he's pros as most people claim anyways tangent uh and fiberglass wing i ordered a fiberglass wing on amazon i'd be like oh, a honda racer speaking of which i have a canopy on the way but whatever so yeah back to the real thing um i'm not super excited about how weak the front end is but at the same time i don't plan on like teeny bashing this thing or going nuts but back to uh, the overall stiffness this is like a paddle board on the bottom and i'm Somehow tracking aluminum shavings on here because most of the time this is a shop. Um, but look at this. Like, I am standing on this. I'm only about 145 pounds. I'm not huge. But I could jump on this pretty readily. And it, you know, it flexes some. But for, uh, yeah. Like, here, I'll just show you guys. You put it down. I hope you could see that. I was kind of jumping like a trampoline there. So yeah, it's uh, impressively stiff. Um, I kind of wanted like an aluminum floor. I figured that would be stiffer. But there's uh, this dude, Eric Martin. I don't know. Watched a bunch of his videos. He really swore by the, the pads. You guys should look him up. I'll, I'll link him down here in the description. He's got a bunch of awesome videos. If you're looking at inflatables, he's a great source to check stuff out. He's got a lot of videos covering them. But anyways, he recommended the, the drop stitch air floor, like a paddle board. And uh, noting that, these are 3.6 PSI, the tunes. And I have one here, one here. There's a seam right here. You can kind of see where it parts. Same on this side. So I got four plus five, the one I'm on. Those are 3.6. Uh, they inflate on, you know, the far corners. This one inflates to 10 PSI there. Um... Yeah, I'm super glad I got the this floor over the aluminum floor for a, a couple of reasons. One, I think it's lighter. Most people say it is 10 pounds, 15 pounds. It's not a huge distance, but it all adds up. Like I said, the boat only is supposed to weigh 110 pounds with all the oars. I don't like them, including the pump. Um, we'll get to accessories in a moment. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't... Um, it doesn't weigh a whole lot and they're not adding a whole bunch to it. So um, the, 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 it all kind of adds up. So as soon as you're transporting it, moving it, that sort of thing. So saving some weight is a good thing. Um, being able to fold up transport easier, this thing fits down pretty small. Like, uh, uh, like one and a half of those single boxes right there, the little, these boxes, like if it's just like put one on its side, like that long, it's it's all in that. Um, the transom is pretty much the longest part, and the rest rolls up into a, a, not a big section at all. So that that's pretty cool. And the other cool thing I like about the air floor, besides that stuff, which is very cool stuff, but I like the fact that because I plan on using this as a a swim platform is a playboat is an explorer and an adventure vehicle. I like the fact that you sit back and kick it on it. You guys are kind of rattly on there. 
and it, it's comfortable. Like I could just lay on this thing and I'm already like, this is mattress status. Like if I wanted to, I'm, I'm done right here. I don't need to, you know, this is a nice soft floor. You move around and you know, your knees and stuff. Um, I'm slightly concerned about my dog's nails. Uh, if I notice it really starts digging in a scratch and I might try to put some sort of cover or something down, but that might also be a problem just in moving around, safety, uh, and then they'll chafe stuff in between. So I'm just gonna try to do my best or just see what happens. Ho hopefully it lasts and doesn't get too tore up. The, um, but yeah, I like the fact I can run around on my knees. I'm not a big fisher person. Um, excuse me, but I plan to get into a little more bass fishing here. And uh, hooks are a kind of concern. The other thing, the one drawback that I have seen with the aluminum floor, besides the risk of puncture, but the whole thing's a giant risk of puncture, is you lose, you know, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, maybe even closer to two inches there of floor space. And it, you know, it kind of adds up. It in moves your CG up, uh, gives you less room in the gunnels here um, to hang and put stuff. And I've already gone crazy at the 3D printer, but that's going to be a whole nother episode. And we've DOS printed all kinds of 3D accessories already. These these have become my accessory rails. But anyways, uh, nice big heavy rope. I like a heavy rope on the bow. You always need to have a bow line handy. That's just... I don't know, growing up for my dad and stuff. You have a bow line for the boat, the length of the boat. I need to trim a little bit off so it doesn't get into the prop. Uh, I need to do that before I get into the water, before I forget. In case it goes over, um, comes around, you don't want it to end up in the prop. But a big heavy line, It's that way it doesn't get twisted up on somebody, cut into them, that sort of thing. Something you can handle, something you can throw off on shore, tie around stuff. I don't plan on docking this thing because one little nail could kind of ruin my day on this. It is an inflatable. Um, you know, it's a beach goer. It's an out of the truck, go play sort of rig. Uh, yeah, kind of get in an aft here. Well, obviously, uh, supposed to be a seat there, seat here. I'm going back and forth. I originally kind of meant to sit here on the gunnel. Uh, one, I don't plan on running the oars. They're, they're, that's just on here to be on here um i plan on sitting here you know it's built in seat you're up high but the problem with that is is you're always turned sideways the whole time driving you're just sideways and my neck's never been happy um so i i would never i don't want to be turned sideways all day the other thing is i plan or i ordered a canopy uh and i plan on hooking it to here um that's where most people hook them and it seems like a really logical place it's a nice sturdy structural point and if i put the canopy up right here um actually it'll be on the inside flipped over in here uh the whatever uh, the or lock thing will be on the inside here so that's going to be right in my field of view no bueno um it, you know, pole's going to come back it's probably going to be right here in my head um that yeah that ain't going to work so i'm going to try seeing if i can make this work um you know, it's just more junk in the boat. The pad's temporary. I'll add a pad to that. But, uh, yeah, everyone else, well, the one or two other people that I plan on taking to just do whatever. Uh, specs for this thing are uh, here. It's, uh, you know, pretty cool little boat. It's uh, 335. It's rated for four people, no children, no kids allowed on this boat. Um 550 kilos total, 10 horsepower max, and 3.62 PSI for the tubage. Um, drain plugs, scup, I guess they're more scup plugs because um, I guess you can't, unless it gets all punctured up, you're not going to fill a rubber boat with water. Let me get my sapatas here. Uh. Woohoo! Ooh, while I'm seeing and noticing it, I do like the nice handy rail down the side. Makes it a great swim platform. Um, it's not really meant to be. These are nice and beefy, but I, I would tend to want to pick it up and carry it from here. Um, the handles, that, that would be just more comfortable in their hands. You know, that's going to dig in and move around. But in terms of hanging out in the water, 
Oh, that's going to be sweet. Those those are going to be handy in the water. Um, around the aft, it has these nice little splash guards. So as an internet comes up around the transom, wants to splash up or, you know, hug the, uh, the, the surface tension, whatever. If it wants to hug, splash up, it'll be good. I'm sure this is going to be a wet ride, but that's kind of the point. It's Arizona, Havasu, it's wet here. Uh, and it's very hot, so a little bit of splash is welcome. Uh, what I was saying, scuppered plugs is it's not a drain plug because it's not really a one way, it has this little flap of roo. I'm gonna try to pull it down. You can see, it's a little titty in the middle to hold it, but it's a one way valve. And I'm really curious on if these work out really well because that'd be cool. Uh, the nice taco cut version if you guys want one of these cats and you want a nice one get a taco cat or if you're down in new zealand uh it's called a true kit those are all nice but the taco cut actually has an open transom uh stainless steel kind of a framework um and that one would be a lot better if you want to get froggy with because it would take the heavier seas and whatever it took over the bow it would just run right out the back if that becomes a problem with this uh or if you want to get excited with yours you could hole saw, you know, a hole or two. You'd want to keep them, um, you know, don't don't take away too much. You'd want to keep a couple inches all the way around. But a nice round hole structurally won't hurt anything. You could probably one larger one or multiple smaller ones or stagger them would be the better idea. But uh, there would be ways that you could help dump water over in a hurry. Uh, loose gears also going over, escaping off the back. And then when you're just also at anchor or like I plan on doing, running this thing up on the beach, any of the higher waves that are just going to be splashed against the back here, um, because this, this will be probably fairly out of the water, it's going to go run right back up into my boat and everything that's on shore and all the dirt and that'll just be a big mess. So, uh, we'll get, we'll cross that when we get there. The rub rails around the side have these nice little ring -a dings here. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of covering it for the boat. It comes with, uh, this kind of weird at first two-stage pump. I had these little plugs in here, uh, just to keep some dirt out. And it's apparently half good. Uh, there's two billows in here. This outer billow and then an inner billow. The outer billow is high volume, um, so if and that's capped off by this plug and this is the uh the out so this is the one that you hook to the boat and this is the one that you leave open or if you're going to deflate you move the hose from here to here um it does have this cool what so i was taking off at the beginning hook um i do like integrated stuff like this that hooks top and bottom from there to there um the hook is a pretty nice feature rubber gasket ring a ding ding thing so it goes to 4.4 psi here with the plug in using the external billows but then when you pull this plug uh it just lets those ones bypass or back to atmosphere and then when you step on here uh you can actually see right down in there there's a second set of billows and you could feel them i guess uh I, I don't have enough hands you know all those mutations you can be born with but when it's plugged here and go into the boat you could actually reach in like if you step on you could reach in you could feel a second set of billows inch and a half two inches in there uh, the, uh, being smaller diameter uh over the same workload uh you could get this a higher pressure so for the one set uh plugged up here you go to 4.4 psi which kind of sucks it's not the 3.6 that is required but then you go to 14.7 here, which is also not the required PSI for the four. So that's kind of a big fail there, guys. Um, I went out and bought an electrical pump. Super stoked on the thing. It's noisy, but it's kind of to be expected. But anyways, I'll go into that in a separate video. Um, definitely, if you guys are evolving into this stuff, I'll carry this thing. This will be like... My camper one, my backup one, like if I go on a trip, if I'm going out with friends, I'll throw it in the boat. If I'm like really going adventuring, I'll maybe take it with me. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not super excited, but it does work. And it, it's not actually, you could probably have the whole thing 
pumped up in 15 minutes or so with that thing, 10 to 15, 15 tops. Um, you will have some nice calves or legs out of it, but yeah, uh, you'll, you'll get it there. It does come with two seats, um, second orage. This bag, the bag is actually pretty sweet because it folds out in multiple directions, kind of like that. So you can see this is actually some material that I put in here just to operate, um, excuse me, Junkola here, um, cleaning. Uh, so you put the, the boat down in this area and then you fold the flaps up either side of it and it's got some D-rings and straps and you can kind of zoop it all up. Very cool, very awesome, nice at the include of it. Big, big, two big downsides. One, strap hole is in right there. So uh, they're only good for kind of like closing the package up um, and, you know, sealing it up. It leads me into my second one, which is the real big fail, is if you go to pick this thing up, buy any of these straps, it's 110 pounds. That ain't gonna live to 110 pounds. That little dude's gonna just rip right out. So they don't pick it up by the straps. Don't do that, that won't work. It should have had something like this sewn in. It was a nice loop, you know, one continuous, obviously not continuous, there's a break in it somewhere here. But I actually had these sewn up for me. Um, but a really cool dude here, Michael, that I sail with in town. Um, but yeah, these, uh, is, or I had to see there's a break. But that's a lot more heavy duty way to do things. But anyways, that's my breast boat. Um, yeah, remember that it's a $800 or wait, um, $950 eBay plus tax special state. I live in Arizona. It was $20 to zero to register it. The stencil cost, the amount of masking tape and the paint is equal to that $20 that I paid to register it. So that's pretty stokage. Um, got a brand new motor showing up for it. You guys will see an unboxing video of that. I'm going to put this all together, get her wet, and let you really know what I think out on the water. But this has been my initial unboxing. So you guys enjoy. And uh, always remember, keep your powder dry. Mind that top knot, Pilgrim.